Hello, hello, good evening. I can't see, sorry. Hello, good evening. It's Friday evening and it's time for another Crafty Christmas countdown. My name is Kate Bolt. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK, bringing you some fun Christmas crafting on this rainy, miserable, wintry Friday evening. Hi, Helen. Lovely of you to join me. Hope you're okay. Hi, Joe. Hope you're all well. It's been a lovely day today. I've had a lovely day. I've been out delivering little goodies to people, so that's been really nice. Um, lots of crafty little things. So yeah, that was a part of a craft swap I was involved with, and uh, that's taken up a lot of time, but it's been so nice. Hello, Mum. Hi, Helen. Hi, everybody. Hello and welcome. Oh, and hello, Alfie the dog. Let me see if I can get him in the shot. Hold on. He's, he's walking, oh, he's gone. He's walking, yeah, no, he's over there somewhere. Beyond. <laughs> he's looking through the window. Let me see if I can get him. Silly dog, look at him then. <laughs> he's so silly. Oh, no, I don't know how to turn you back around. Something has occurred. I've got all these funny effects. Oh, this is not good. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you really don't want to sit and look at my blinds in my craft room. Right, well, I've got a bit of fun. He is looking for Santa. Santa's definitely coming to Alfie. He's tried to be a good boy this year. He's tried. Right, okay. So I have got lo um, a lovely project for you tonight. A bit of a Christmas fun one. Very simple, very useful, and I think you're gonna like it. Um, I'm actually not using Christmas papers for it, but it would be very useful made in Christmas papers. He is guarding me, bless him. Right, I'm going to turn you round, so hold on to your hats. Here we go. There we are. And I'm back in my shadowy spot tonight. I am sorry, guys, but there is a reason for it. I uh, have all my stuff to hand. My crafting was completely upside down for the last few days, and I just managed to get it all back right again. So um, I just needed to hop on without having to decamp everything again. So I hope you can really, I'm so sorry about the shadow, excuse the shadow. I tell you what, I could actually move it. Let me try. I'm just going to uh, move some of Jacob's things. He's home learning again this week. Let me move this round. While his year group are, uh, here we go. Yay, your comments are back on, that's good. We are moving. We are moving, so I'm sorry if this makes you feel a little bit sick. Sorry, I was cleaning my table, so I've got tea towel there. Right, hold on. Right, we're moving over here, see if we can get rid of some of that shadow. I just won't have everything to hand. It was annoying me. Yeah, Jacob's not self-isolating, but his year group are remote learning to try and stop the spread. Because there seem to be a lot of cases in the school at the moment. Right, there we are, that's a bit better. Oh, thank you, Philomena, and welcome. Welcome, let me shut the door. Excuse me, Alfie. Okay, so I've got a bit of a fun project to share with you. Now, I've got these notebooks here. And I'm going to show you how to make a cover for these really inexpensive jotta pads. You can you can buy them anywhere. I got these ones, um, literally really cheap as chips. I got these in the range, and in packs of four for a pound. I mean they're really not expensive, so just to make them look really pretty. And uh, you could definitely do them in Christmas papers. I'll show you the one I made already like this, so I used some of the bauble paper um, that we had, I think is, uh, now it's in the sale, it's retiring this paper, so it is in the sale, if it's still there, grab it, I'm not sure what is left, because it keeps changing. So this jotter, now, I took the idea from somebody else, there's a lot of them on YouTube, so you can always find how to cover a notebook. The person I was looking at, her tutorial, she had a short fat notebook, and her pen went across the top, and it fitted beautifully. But 
there's no way I'm going to get a pen to look nice across the top of there. So I decided instead of having a top opening one, I was going to do a side opening one. So I just changed all the measurements to fit my notebook. And I'm going to show you, hi Jen, I'm going to show you how to make the measurements to fit any notebook size you've got. And so it's side opening. Okay, you can see mine's a bit rubbishy because this was my, my prototype. Brightly gleaming, thank you, Philomena. It's gorgeous paper. And I had a whole stack of this left from last year because I knew it carried over. Um, so pretty. I saved it. You know when you save your favourite papers? It's lovely. So I thought these would make great notebooks and put some magnets on the back pop it on the fridge, and you've always got a notebook in your kitchen. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm cooking my Christmas dinner, I like to write all my timings down for when the turkey goes in, right down to the stuffing and the gravy and everything else for my meal. So I thought this would be ideal to have in the, Christmas, in, in the kitchen on Christmas Day, and then you can use it for your shopping lists and your to-dos and everything else, or you could just pop it in your handbag. You don't have to put a magnet on it. Hi, Claire. So it's got a little space for your pen. And this pen is a bit skinnier than the one I originally made it for. So I'm going to show you how to make it to fit anything, any notepad that you like. What I did was I made a template for mine. And you can see all my measurements on there. This is how I made it. Um, I'm going to have to get my adhesive because I've moved, haven't I? And the dog is <laughs> lying there. These would make really great little gifts for people too. You don't have to buy the cheapest notebooks there are. These were just the price of the ones that I could find. But find any nice notebooks that you like. This one's got a cardboard back and it's just adhesive at the top. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to measure it up. Now for this size notebook, which is, I don't have my grid paper out with my measurements on, but this size notebook is eight and a quarter inches long and it is five and a half no that's not right hang on a minute let me get my grid my grid paper with the measurements on it is it three or something two or three inches the dog just wants to sit right there so I can't get by. <laughs> He's a silly dog. Okay, this is my friend. Nine minutes in the microwave. What's nine minutes in the microwave? I'm very confused. Do you know what? It doesn't take much to confuse me. Great gift for anyone. It is a great little gift. I love these notebooks. I've had them as tops before and I was like, oh, I wonder how they make that with a pen slot in it. Right, I'm trying to bring this up so you can see the measurements down here. Okay, so I want to show you how I work the measurements out. That's my point. So you can do it with your notebook if you buy one. Okay, so my notebook is three, two and three quarter inches along here. Two and three quarter inches. That's right. Two and three quarter inches along there. And this is eight and a quarter inches. So two and a three quarters by eight and a quarter. There's my notebook because I'm going to write it down so you can see how I've worked it out. So my piece of cardstock that I am going to cut to make a cover. This is going to be my piece of cardstock. Okay, so the cover, the front piece of my notebook, we know is two and three quarter inches along here. We know that this is eight and a quarter. Yes, we do. 
Okay, so then we need to make this piece here. And that depends on how big our pen is. So I think the pen I was using was some of the, uh, I can't remember the name of those pens. They were really, um, really nice ones that you can get from in little packs and Tesco's. Oh, might be this kind, Zebra. And I worked out that they are three eighths of an inch in around. So on my grid paper, they're about three eighths of an inch. So I need a piece here that's three eighths of an inch. And then I need another one to make this valley. So three eighths of an inch again. And then I need a piece for the back to go on my back. And that I just put in as two inches, I believe when I did it. So you can measure your front, you can measure your pen, do two lots of that and then a piece to go on the back and then you will have it. Now, when you shut it, you need to be able to have a little lip on it. So you want this little, this piece just to be tiny, tiny smidgen bigger. So instead of two and three quarters, I'm going to make it two and seven eighths along there, like that. So I just added an eighth of an inch on it. Okay, and then I add them together. So I've got two inches, I've got three quarters of an inch, and I've got two and seven eighths, which makes five and five eighths along the bottom. Okay, so that's the that's the size I need along the bottom and this stays at what it always was which is eight and a quarter so that is that now so you can now do that for any size notebook that you have but I was quite pleased about it being eight and a quarter my notebook because my A4 cardstock is also eight and a quarter so that means I can get two from one sheet of cardstock which is quite economical I don't know what nine minutes in the microwave means Okay, so let's make sure I'm doing this right. So eight and a quarter. Um, yeah. That's it. Let's move this out of the way. So you can see my cardstock is eight and a quarter. So if my card stock's eight and a quarter that way, I just need to cut it one way. I'm gonna cut it at five and five eighths. And then I can have two from one sheet of paper. So I've got five and four eighths, move it along slightly a smidge. And I've got five and five eighths. Let me just make sure I'm doing that right. Five and four eighths, and five eighths. There we are. <laughs> Hope I added it up right. I did, because I did it before. So you can get two from one piece of cardstock. So now I've cut it, I'm gonna keep it the same way with a short piece at the top, and I'm gonna do my score lines. And this is really easy, because you're just gonna do what you've already done. So. We know that the piece on the back, I just gave it two inches. I arbitrarily decided I wanted a two inch piece on the back. So I'm gonna score two inches. And then I've got three eighths of an inch for my pen. So I'm gonna just go over three eighths of an inch. Three, three eighths. And then if you add on another three eighths for the other bit, you're gonna to go to two and three quarters. There, and that's all the scores, score, score lines that you have to do. So you've got to do two inches, two and three eighths, and two and three quarters. Done. I do believe I've left my scissors somewhere. I shouldn't find another pair. All right. Let's score, let's um, make these creases nice and sharp. Now. I'm going to make a valley so the one in the middle I'm going to just fold the other way I'm going to try anyway the color is lovely thanks Philomena I love this color it's petal pink and I've picked some nice papers to go with it so as you can see this is what the front of my cards going to look my my notebook cover is going to look like so I've got the valley for my pen I've got the back and I've got the front like so, like that. Now I need my scissors. 
but I have a little pair. So they will do the job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend it back on itself, bring it towards me, and I'm gonna cut a slot kind of in the middle, doesn't really matter, and I want it, I don't know how big, however big you think you'd like that to be. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter, I just don't have it too small, this tab here. Okay, I'm gonna push that through. So it pokes out instead of in. Do you see that? That's where your pen's going to sit. Like that. So you've got that like that. Now this is where the magic bit comes in. I'm going to use some tearing tape on the inside. I was very happy that it added up to eight and a quarter when I uh, measured it all because I was like, oh, I can get two pieces to it of one piece of cardstock. <laughs> Please me no end. So we're going to put that piece here. So we've got some tearing tape. Now, do this as the next step before you glue your notebook in. You don't want to put any glue here. You want to put another piece here. It's a simple thing, Helen, isn't it? It's genius. I was blown away when I saw somebody doing that. I was like, oh, look. <laughs> okay. So I have put tear and tape on this side, the side right next to the, the short piece, not this piece or this piece. Okay, and I'm going to take this off and glue it down. So that is going to stay stuck like that. So you've now got this piece that is glued down. This bit is free. Okay, and this bit doesn't have any sticky on it at all. So we're going to take our notebook. Now these ones have got a cardboard back, so I'm going to stick it to that. Now, when I first stuck mine down, I put the sticky tape down here, went to stick it down, and I realised I put sticky tape down on this bit that I don't need sticky tape on, as you can see on my tester one. So I would say put the tape on the coloured cardstock to save making a mistake like I did. And pop it all the way down. Maybe put two on there. Take these bits off if they want to come off. Are you all ready for Christmas? Tell me. I'm in the middle of dressing my tree. I've almost finished. It always takes me a couple of days. I kind of start it and then go back to it and finish it off the next day. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make sure I've got my notepad the right way up. That could be a disaster. And I am going to pop it in. And I'm going to butt it up to the edge of that so that it's in right. There we go. So we've got it on there now. And then your pen will fit in there, like so. And then you've got your notebook and your pen. Now we're gonna cover it with some pretty paper. And I've got this gorgeous paper here. This is so pretty, I love this paper. Now I'm gonna go and get the catalogue and tell you exactly what paper that is before I forget. I would have done a Christmas one, but we've got a mega sale on at the moment. And um, a lot of our Christmas papers are sold out. So I thought, you know what? Doesn't really have to be Christmas papers. You can use what you've got. You can use this gorgeous paper as well. So let's grab it and see. This one is called the Peony Garden Designer Series Paper this one here and it's absolutely stunning so pretty it's on page 149 of the annual catalogue it's got these gorgeous designs and I really love it let's have a look 
and that's the front. And then you've got these on the back. There's really pretty, pretty pieces. So I think I'm gonna go for this one. Really lovely. There we are. So we know when I measured the front that this was I've got that as two and five eighths, and this is eight. So we know that this this piece here was two and three quarter inches, don't we? And we know that this is eight and a quarter inches. So we want it just a slightly smaller, a quarter of an inch smaller on two sides. So that makes that eight by two and five eighths. So I'm just gonna cut that up. And we'll pop it on. So if you have a 12 by 12 piece, cut the 8 piece first and then you've got a strip left to do another one. 2 and 5 eighths, so there we are. Let's see how that is, see if I wrote my measurements down properly. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. I think it's going to go up that way, though. Oh, I like that. That's so pretty. It's got to find my glue now. I'm going to use Tombow for this. Hi, Margaret. I'm showing everyone how to um, cover any size notebook, make uh, an inexpensive jotter pad, something a little bit more special, and cover up the cover. Right, so that's like that. There we go, we got it. And then I know that I have some magnetic sheet here. It's just a piece, you can buy these really inexpensive magnetic sheets and I can't even remember where I bought mine, the range or something like that. And I'm just going to cut out I don't know where I put my scissors earlier on. Oh, right here next to me. <laughs> I'm going to cut out a piece to go on the back. Sometimes I measure in old money, Mum. Sometimes I measure in new. <laughs> I'm a bit like, I can do either. I'm, I think it was because I remember both. But I tell you what's bothering me is the wonky back on this magnet, the wonky line that I just cut with the uh, scissors. It shouldn't matter. I wonder if my trimmer will cut through the magnet. Oh, no problem at all. Oh, nice and nice and uh, straight now. I will put some double-sided tape on the magnet, magnetic sheet, and then it will go on the fridge. And I can put my shopping list on there or my to-do list or whatever kind of scribbles you like. I've got my one that I made before that I'm going to be calculating my Christmas dinner timings on. <laughs> right, you always need a piece of paper in the kitchen with a pen, don't you? I find anyway. Somebody calls you with a phone number or anything. There we go. There we are. So we've got our notepad and pen. And then we need to decorate it. Now, I decorated my my one. I put, you got this. Because we all need a bit of encouragement, don't we? So I might get that same stamp set with a different ink.
go. Doggies everywhere today. Yeah, so these are the pens I bought. Zebra pens in a pack. And they fit, I haven't got a lid on that one, but they fit in here really nicely. And you can you know, lift them up and they won't, especially with a lid on, they won't fall out. So that, that was better. Yeah. Mine's got a bit loose. It's been in and out and in and out. So that's that go on there. And I've got my Petal Pink ink pad. Oh, and I need some Whisper White card. And a block. Oh, and I think I've got the stamp, even got the stamp. Oh no, that's a different stamp altogether. I have been very busy stamping today. You've got this. I might even put a little heart on there. the front of mine you could punch something out you could just cut out a rectangle whatever you've got make use of it I just love these these are the tasteful label dies and they are so useful they've got all these lovely really useful shapes and they've got embossing on as well as cutting out and these ones have got stitches on they are so useful for all sorts so I'm going to use those so I'm just going to cut a piece out on my um, cut and emboss machine next to me here Go. I don't know if you can see, it's got a nice little edge on it, that one. Right, now I haven't used this ink for a while. I wonder if I should do it in grey, no I'm going to do it in pink. Can't make up my mind. I think I might do it in grey. Basic grey, I think. Excuse me, Alfie. He wants to literally sit in my chair tonight. He's driving me mad. Come on, move, darling. That's a good boy. Grab my stamp cleaner next to me. Make sure that's nice and clean. We're going to do it in grey. Let's hope for that works. I love these dies as well. They are so useful. I seem to be using them all the time. But they are so nice. Yeah. So you got this. Let's hide Jen, by the way, and just pop that over the top. Who else uses their grid paper to scribble on? So I'm going to bring it quite a way down because I'm going to try and pop that heart on there, see if it'll fit. You got this. Yeah, I like that. So I hope you're all going to be running out and buying jotter pads. And make your little gifts. <laughs> Love it. So fun. So I've done I've done the heart in in the uh, petal pink, and I've done that. You've got this in basic grey, and I'm gonna pop it on there. Um, I don't think I'm gonna bother sticking sticking it up on sticky foam pads. This one I did. I think this one I'll just glue it down for a change. And then that will be done. You can pop it on the fridge. Isn't that a cute little notebook? Doesn't it look a bit better? Thank you, Margaret. I've done notebook covers before. 
but I've never made one with a pen holder in it and I've never made one sideways opening. So this jotter opens this way, but because I wanted the pen to sit down the side, I made it side opening. I was very pleased with myself when I measured it up and it all worked. <laughs> little things please little minds. That's what my mum tells me. She's right. I hope you like it. It's great fun to make. I got rather addicted to making them. Been part of a crafty swap and so I was making rather a lot of those. So this is what it looked like to start with, the notebook. I Just literally a jotter. No cover on it, just a cardboard back. And now you can use that and uh, the magnet on the back means you can pop it on the fridge. And it's always there. Hope you enjoyed it. And you might have a go. If you have a go at making one, um, do let me know. Do pop a picture of it in the group or something like that. Um, and I'll, I'll remind you of how to do it. So measure the front of your notebook. On the front of my notebook was two and seven eighths and I added on an eighth of an inch. No, the front of my notebook was two and three quarters. So I added on an eighth of an inch and made that two and seven eighths, which is this measurement here. I then added on three eighths of an inch for my pen and another three eighths of an inch for my pen. And the back cover, I just put on two, two inches. If you want to use more cardstock, you could, you could do the back cover all the way to the edge I didn't think it really mattered. It just anchors it. So if you add those up, you've got five and five eighths, which is here. And then this is eight and a quarter long. And so then you've got your piece of cardstock, which is eight and a quarter by five and five eighths. But you use these measurements for your score lines. So you score at two inches and then at three eighths of an inch. And then a, another three eighths of an inch so that'll be two and three eighths and another two three eighths of an inch makes it two and three quarters so those are the three score lines two two and three eighths two and three quarters and that is all so once you've scored them you fold them and then you cut your tab out in the middle don't forget to put your glue your adhesive down the back piece inside there and then you're pretty much done and that's how it's made i'm glad you enjoyed it just a bit of fun for my crafty christmas countdown make some notebooks for your friends or your neighbors or just for your fridge for your christmas to-do lists and i shall be back next friday for our last friday christmas countdown see what fun i bring you thank you for joining me i hope you've, you've loved it and don't forget our um End of year closeout sale is still going on, so do have a look and see what reductions are left in there. All right, guys, thanks for joining me and have an amazing weekend. Hope you get everything done that you need to. Thanks so much. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.